Tonight on Hotel Hell, I'm in Pipestone, Minnesota, trying to save a Midwestern hotel from two small sisters who are clueless owners. Did you stay here before you bought it? Uh, once. Once? They don't know what they're doing. I do not think Vanden Molina should be running a hotel at all. This is what we deal with. Every day is a new battle between the owners, Vanda and Rena, and their staff. Kill me, kill me, kill me. Stuck in the middle of it all, the general manager is struggling to hold the place together. There is so much bitterness. It. People are about to explode. These girls aren't running a business. They're running a business into the ground. If you were here for two seconds, you know I've been running my ass off for three fucking days! Do daddy's little girls have it in them to turn this place around? I want that so Or am I already too late? I can't do this. Feels like I'm in a woman's fucking prison. I'm fucking done. I'm fucking done. You stupid bitch. At the heart of Pipestone, Minnesota, stands the historic Calumet Inn, built in 1887. Calumet is a Native American word for peace pipe. But sadly, peace is something in short supply at the Calumet Inn. The hotel is owned by sisters Rena and Vanda Smirkovsky. Nine months ago, their father Jim, or Daddy as they call him, purchased the hotel for the sisters. I'm not sure that Rena and Vanda realize how privileged they are. Just because we dress nice doesn't mean we're spoiled. They are definitely a little bit spoiled. Rena's not just a little bit spoiled. She's also a little bit of a crybaby. There's just too much trash talking around here, and I can't work with people like that. I'm so sick of being judged. You're going to have to come down to earth. <laughs> God, I cry a lot. I don't know what was I crying about. I don't even know. After owning the hotel for just six weeks, Rena found working a bit much. So she took the weekend off in Minneapolis, 200 miles away, and she didn't return for three months. While she was away, the hotel was left at the mercy of her younger sister, Vanda. Vanda considers herself very hardworking, although she doesn't get out of bed until three o'clock every afternoon, leaving the hotel understaffed. A lot of times I feel like people come to work just to make tips and for their paycheck. And they're not necessarily here to take care of this historic artifact. I apologize again. I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you very much. I do not think Vanda and Marina should be running a hotel at all because they don't know what they're doing. And they don't care about anybody. Despite having zero hospitality experience. You know how to use this? Vanda and Rena think they know best, so they stripped the general manager of all her management duties. Before Rena and Vanda got here, I was the general manager of the Calumet, and now I'm a front desk person and a waitress. That's what I am. I've got the chicken feet wrap right here. With the girls in charge, things at the hotel have rapidly gone downhill. Oh, that's moldy. Oh, man. <laughs> Look at this. How are your allergies doing? They're a little bit rough. You need your inhaler? With almost no guests coming in, Vanda and Rena's parents have been forced to leave their family home in Minneapolis and move into the hotel alongside their daughters in a desperate attempt to cut the costs and keep the doors open. I work seven days a week. I miss my home very much. If the situation doesn't change fast, the staff will all lose their jobs. I can't do this. This is real life. Like, this is people's jobs. This isn't you playing hotel because you're bored and the hotel will have to shut its doors forever if gordon ramsay cannot help reen and vanda nobody can and the calumet will close i'm in the middle of minnesota look at this place it's like holland it is incredibly flat windmills everywhere but no fucking tulips look at the size of that thing the largest peace pipe in the world this is it. Wow. This place is huge. It may be historic, but look at that thing. OK. This is the entrance. Are you kidding me? This looks like the entrance to a fucking prison, not a hotel. A prison with an ATM. My god. Hello? 
You are kidding me. Please, come on. I can't believe it. It's so dark in here. It's like a dungeon. Hello? Sob this. And we're gonna get a light. Oh, man. That is crazy. Right. Maybe it's best I turn around and fuck off home now. Hello? I feel like a goonie. Hey, you guys! Uh, wow. Oh, hello. Hi. Ha how are you? When I saw Gordon walk in, I was very scared um, because I knew that he was, you know, trying to check into the hotel. Are you running this place by yourself? Yes, today you I are, am. Today you are. Does anyone work in reception? Me. Yeah. Are you ready? Yes. So you were the server and you're on the front desk? Yes. My name is Mandy. Mandy. Gordon, nice to see you. Nice to see you're you. You're busy. Yes. Very busy indeed. Um, you've got diners to look after. Maybe somebody else should check me in. Okay. Well, I do not feel like a proper GM here. Hey, come down and help, please. I feel like somebody that's here to kind of cover the extra hours. However, I do still get to listen to the complaints. I don't know if you know, Mandy, but there's a bulb missing there. Probably. Um, oh. um, Jim likes to take bulbs out of things so people can't turn lights on, so. Jim likes to take bulbs? Yes, Jim likes to take bulbs. Wow. So, take the bulb out. <laughs> Place in a madhouse. Oh, hello. Hi. Finally. Finally. And first name is? Vanda. Vanda. Pleased to meet you. Likewise, Gordon, good to see you. I'm Rena. Rena, nice to see nice you. Nice to meet you. Sisters. Yes, yes. And owners. Yes. If you don't want me asking, I mean, you look very young to be running a hotel. How old are you? I'm 27. Wow, baby. I'm 32. Wow, babies. <laughs> um, and you both run it together? Yes. So Mandy multitasks. She does the she, restaurants. She's um, actually the general manager. Wow. General manager, head waitress, and she looks like a busser. I'm not happy with her work. It's really difficult to find people who are motivated to work and who want to live to live up to our standards. What room are you in? You are in our oh. best room. The melody of love. Yes. Oh, do you hear people shagging in the next door? <laughs> no, you must hear something. <laughs> wow, holy mackerel. Is that mold in there? I, I wouldn't that? be surprised if it were mold. Uh, where's the uh, wardrobe so I can hang my jacket the up? wardrobe, um, right you know, over right there. Oh, right. That's, yeah, okay. kind of hidden behind the microwave and moldy wow. refrigerator. Jesus. I'm feeling really nervous right now. I know that the room is really cluttered, but I didn't realize it was that bad. Well, at least we have a light bulb. There's a man that goes around nicking light bulbs out of the lamps. Mandy said that he doesn't want them turned on. Some guy called Jim. Jim? Your father Good. takes light bulbs out of the lamps? He's your father. Yeah. Mum works in the business as well. Our mom, mom kind of She's goes around and um, helps clean up after people's mess. Are they owners as well? They're I mean, investors. They're investors. They're investors. So your parents bought you this place? Yes. The moment we saw this place, I knew I had to have it. So I found every single way possible to convince my daddy. No matter what I had to do, I just had to have it. I personally think they could have gotten it for cheaper. And they probably should have. <laughs> Uh, what do you two do all day if mum and dad are hands-on? So I what's do, your role? I do the bookkeeping, I do the front desk in the evening. There was one day, Gordon, I had to man the dining room and the front desk. Oh, that was big just, sis. I don't know where you were, I think you are in Minneapolis or something. Minneapolis? What were you doing back there when you just bought a hotel? I actually needed some time to be alone and figure things out. So you take two weeks away, then what happened? She wasn't gone for two weeks, she was gone for three months. Three months. She's gone for three months. After being open for six weeks. I've heard your role. What do you do? I'm seriously still confused what my role is here. I feel Shit, like what? I don't understand. You I don't own know the place, you don't right. know what your role is. I feel like a bunch of gas bubbles are just flying all over, molecules and atoms just everywhere right now. <laughs> Did you stay here before you bought it? I stayed here. Um, How I, many times? Uh, once. Once? You stayed one fucking night. Overnight. Uh, did, did you stay in here? No, not here, in the other room, down the hall. Show me, down please. The this is actually my favorite room. OK, and this is it. So we stayed in so this room. You stayed in this room. This is even worse than my room. Pea stains all over the disgusting wallpaper, holes in the wall here. Why is this hotel in such a state? We have a lot of problems yeah. with the staff. It, it, it's so hard, Gordon, to just repeat myself. What are the problems? Rudeness, 
unprofessionalism. There is a chronic disease here of complaining and bitching. So we've got a big problem with the staff. Yes, we do. You're welcome for the jobs. You're welcome for the tips. You're welcome. You're welcome. I'm in Pipestone, Minnesota, in a place run by two spoiled sisters whose daddy bought them a hotel. Is that mold in there? I wouldn't be surprised. They tell me the staff are the biggest problem here. It, it, it's so hard, Gordon, to just repeat myself. But I'm not so sure. She wasn't gone for two weeks. She was gone for three months. Hopefully, some lunch will brighten up my disappointing day. Hello. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I'm Jocelyn. Jocelyn, nice to see you. How long have you been here, my darling? I have been here for two years. Two years? In June. Yeah, probably wow. two years. I'm sorry. Two it's years? Just, yeah. And is your father going to buy you a hotel? Never, Never gonna happen. Even if I was like, please, I want it, just because I'm bored. Not going to happen. Right, what would you recommend? Do you want to start with an appetizer, maybe? Yeah. What's the soup of the day? Broccoli cauliflower. Yeah, I'll try one of those. OK. Uh, entrees. Uh, let's go for the fish, the walleye strip. OK. Um, man. Uh, it's a huge menu. How, how many is in the kitchen? Uh, two. Two chefs. Mm -hmm. How do you get this food fresh with only two chefs in the kitchen and a menu with literally 35, 40 dishes on there? You don't. Does it need rice? Our menu here is huge. I wish we could use better ingredients here in Van and Reno. They don't want to spend. I would not spend my money here at the restaurant. No. I think the food sucks. How are you, Mandy? Hi, how You're are busy. you? busy. You're always running around. Yeah. Amazing. Um, how long have you been general manager? Um, two years. Two years. No disrespect, you don't look like a general manager. Right. I'm not that anymore. Oh. Yeah. Shit. Seriously? So, seriously. Did you have a falling out with them? Because no. No? Everybody's incompetent, apparently. Really? So. I'm sick of not really being the general manager. Um, I kind of feel like I'm being pulled in all different directions, and I don't really have a say in anything. How would you describe the owners? Amanda is borderline sociopath. Um, the other one, I don't know. I can't describe her. She's never here. So. Wow. I appreciate your honesty. Thank you. Wow. Mandy seems pissed. I suppose if I was working as hard as she is and the owner thought the staff were the problem, I'd be pissed too. Thank you. This is a broccoli cauliflower. Right. Get you a new drink. Thank you, man. Thank you. Mm, it smells burnt. So sorry. Taste it. Just a small bit. Look. Mm-mm. It is absolutely fucking oh, disgusting. Oh. Does the chef not care? Mm. No? No. Mm -hmm. I don't think the cooks care anymore. But I feel like a lot of us have gotten to that point. Mm. OK. Walleye fish strip. Which isn't a strip. It's like a ball. Honestly. Yeah. How hard is that thing? I've never had it, because I don't like it. Is it, it fresh or frozen? Frozen, but it looks like crap, so I wouldn't eat it. Jesus Christ. Uh, that's what it yeah. takes. Uh, yeah. That is disgusting. Man. I mean, what's wrong with this place? What's... What? Everything. Who's the most assertive about the sisters? Vanda. Because Rena's not here. No. How committed are they to running the business? Don't care. I think they look at it as like, well, I own it, so we can do whatever we want. No. Sleep till 3 in the afternoon, keep the bar open till 5 what? in the morning. I mean, how do you respect somebody who does that? Oh, no, 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 no. Can you have any owners and chefs? Yeah. Thank you, darling. You're welcome. The food here is horrific. It's as if the chef is cooking in her sleep. Gordon wants to talk to you guys. Now, you don't need me here to tell you the soup is that disgusting that even before anybody tasting it, it smells burnt. This is why we make our own food. You can I don't eat here anymore. Unbelievable. Yeah. Have you given up, young lady? Do you hate food? What's going on? They used to love my job, and now I hate it. I can see what's not working for you. And the owners. I'm not going to tolerate disrespect. You know, we're not getting paid. We're not paying ourselves. You can't, as owners, complain about not being paid. You fucking own yeah. the place. They don't have ownership of this historic building. I Their would... daddy's not paying for everything. Can I tell you something, Gordon? 
Jen has called herself the best cook in town. She has Stop told us... Stop picking over... on her. You have turned every fucking member of staff against you. I used to be really chirpy and happy, and I, I can't even smile anymore. It's not about you. Yeah, and I can't, even, I can't even motivate myself to do my project but anymore. Again, just listen to both of you. Kill me, kill me, kill me. You're only as good as the team underneath you. Yeah. Whether you're here three months a fucking year or three hours a day, it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. Grow up. People have heard that I'm in Pipestone, Minnesota's Calumet Inn. If you have any openings. Uh, yes. And the hotel is starting to fill up with guests. Four. Look at the hole in the door. I feel sorry for all of them. The sheets are kind of threadbare. The wallpaper's hideous. Well, the first time my pasta was burnt, I purposely got the same thing to see if it was any better, and it's it's not. Very sorry about the wait. Where am I? Oh my god. Ah, sorry. Uh, Jesus. You right? Oh. You like some help? No, nope, I got it. No. Thank you. How many tables you got left to serve? At least two, three, four, five yet, it looks five. like. Five. The size of the menu, two cooks behind the line, I mean. Uh, Ridiculous. I don't, I don't get it. I mean, honestly, I don't know how any standard can be kept. I don't get it. With the place this busy, it should be all hands on deck, but it's not. Uh, where's that, Rina? I think she's in the office. No, she's not there. <laughs> I want to help people. I want to do Rina? good things. Reno, are you up here? You okay? Yeah. Oh. Hi. Can I come in? Yeah. Wow. Uh, is this your bedroom? Hi. Oh. This is my mom. You're Rina's mum. Great to meet you. Hey, to meet you. First name is? Rita. Rita. Are you okay? I'm okay. But you look like you've been crying for the last hour. I just didn't feel like being around people right now, I guess. Rita, does she always run away when things get hot? Yeah. <laughs> What's become very obvious is the lack of commitment. I feel like we should have purchased a duplex or something like that. It's a bit late to think that now. I just can't seem to get up I know, and do what I have to do. Are you capable of holding the reins here? I want to start taking control, but I need room to grow. I need space for me to take charge. You need to get a grip. How about getting changed and coming downstairs and just facing the music? I can do that. Thank you. Thank you. While Rena's been upstairs crying about nothing, her guests downstairs have every reason to be upset. How was your chicken? It was really dry. It's kind of what? honestly one of the driest chicken burgers I've ever had. She can bring the check, I'll be happy. This place is a train wreck. All right, and the coffee's complimentary, so. Oh, that's oh, wonderful. And they will bring you up a pot to your room. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Vanda Rena might not treat her like a general manager, but Mandy Shaw works like one. We just have a little word down the end of the dining room together, two minutes. I want to tell Gordon if things don't change, nobody's going to be here. The Calumet will close. You strike me as the owner because you are so busy. Every time Thank I see you. you, you're running in the bell, in the lounge, in the reception. I, I hate unhappy the kitchen. customers. I hate, I hate that. I, I can see how much it needs you. Mm -hmm. The two owners, do they know that you can run this place? No, we are all incompetent to them. Wow, what frustrates you most about the two sisters? Um, Vanda's a micromanager. She's very um, cynical. She doesn't even get up off her ass and help. If it's busy, she doesn't care. Well, this is what makes my house payment. I do. And Rena is a pansy. Can't stand that. What is Rena good at doing? Cry? No. Nah. Are they qualified to run this business? No, they should go out and work in the real world first. And the rest of the staff, your team that work under you, mm -hmm. there is so much bitterness it. towards the owners. Mm -hmm. Has this been building up? People are about to explode. The biggest problem at the hotel is the ownership. Who we're supposed to respect ultimately doesn't respect us, and I think that makes people um, really not want to be a part of this team. The only shining light in this building right now is you. Because if you weren't here, they would be fucked. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Thank you, folks. Thank you. Thanks. Good night.
I don't think Vander and Rena have a clue about how much they've really upset their staff with their absences and their high-handed behaviour. I need to get the staff and the owners in one room and try to get them to communicate. OK, when was the last time all of you had a meeting? When we first purchased this place. So nine months ago. Mm -hmm. We're just so burnt out, Gordon. So are we. First of all, you guys, I think you guys need to understand that we live like among, in four corner walls and we have no escape. We have, we're living that, here. Nobody made you stay and live here. You know what? I think, it's, I think we know what the problem is. We stepped in their territory and they cannot let go of their ego. Here's the problem. If you all fucking got to work, I wouldn't be so fucking mad all the time. I know one thing that I come to work and I do my job. Where the fuck are you? <laughs> Mandy, what kind of effect does that have on the team when you can't get a word from your owners? It's really annoying. It's um, it's passive aggressive behavior. Um, it makes people just very un you know they don't want to talk to you. Then fine, you don't want to talk to us. We don't want to talk to you. There's attitude. I do. But when, when we do, there's attitude. Okay. okay. And then first of all, that shit starts diesel. with you two. Then see, that's, that's fine. fine. I, no I mean, emotion. I'm just. I want so people who are, are committed. Really? Committed? Fuck you! I've been here for three and a half years. I've done everything from bartending the fucking pub to housekeeping to front desk to serving. We want to know that you're gonna be here. That's the thing. No, fuck off. I'm fucking done. I'm fucking done. Fuck off. Committed. You stupid bitch. You just got here. I work 65 fucking hours a week, sometimes 70, and I have two fucking kids. I'm a single fucking mom. It feels like I'm in a woman's fucking prison. I'm leaving. I'm done. I'm trying to save Pipestones, Minnesota's Calumet Inn. But Mandy, the general manager of three years, the only shining light in this building right now is you. Oh, fuck off! I'm has just done. quit her job. I'm fucking done. Yes. Fuck off. Committed. You stupid bitch. You just got here. I know a lot of people feel that if Mandy's gone, I'm gone, I'm gone, I'm gone, I'm gone. I mean, this is getting real ugly. Our general manager has just walked out. You know the funny thing is? You, no, 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 listen, it's not funny. That girl dedicated her life to keeping you in a hotel. Have you ever employed one single member of staff? Like Has she her? even worked a day in her life? How could you say that, Jen? You can't you say that. You don't, don't know, know me at all. Life. You don't if you were here for two go. seconds, you know, I've been running my ass for three fucking do. days. You guys don't see me do these things. I do them, but you guys don't see it. You don't know the life behind all. You have no clue. You don't have any for fuck's sake, one of you step up. If you were my daughters, I'd kick you out. You can laugh all you fucking want. I'm not your father. But what I do know is, you don't fucking deserve this. Thank you for the first meeting in nine months. I thought Gordon was gonna be nice to me. That was extraordinary. The only person actually cared about this place, Mandy, the general manager, has gone. Those daughters are absolutely screwed. I had a dreadful sleep. I need to get some exercise to burn off some of the tension from all that screaming last night. Hey, good morning, honey. Hi, how are you? I'm very how are you? I'm good. Quite a rough night, that one. I want to go to the gym and okay. do some workout and okay. swim. Um, what, uh, what floor is it on? It's not. We don't have one in the building. There's one right over there. Yeah. Over where? Right over here, like down this street. It's like a rec center. So I have to go out of the hotel? No. Nah. Nah, fuck this. No chance. It's a ridiculous sod that. A hotel this size with no gym on site is just another example of Vander and Rena forgetting who's most important around here. Hey, Good morning. Good morning. Let's a little catch up. Hopefully today I can finally get through to them. Good morning. These are some of your guests. All I'd like to hear is just nothing but the plain truth and give these owners an insight to what you're paying for. So let's start with you. Um, I'll tell you, the uh, room was very disappointing. 
We look for historic buildings when we go places, and, and this was just a shame. It was like it was neglected. It was run down to the ground before we purchased this place. And about 10 years. For 10 years. You've got to stop blaming people. Madam, please. Can you no. give us any insights to your experience? Well, when we came in, we actually came in the back way, this dark hallway where it's like a dungeon. there's, yeah, a dungeon. Yeah. yeah, I entered yeah. that way. I mean, it was like coming through an entrance to a prison. Yeah. Madam, please. I have severe asthma and allergies. Dusting the top of the doorways and just caked in white dust. And, yeah. Oh, my God. And yeah. it, it went beyond a, a comfort issue. This went to a health, a health hazard issue. issue. I was literally worried about my fiance's safety. And the last thing this place needs is some kind of, you know, wrongful death liability. Oh, God. Would any of you come back to stay here? Absolutely not. Not one of you. Thank you. Thank Please. you, guys. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. I'm so sorry. The complaints from guests are obvious things that a hotel owner should be taken care of. But these girls haven't got a clue or a general manager. Do you honestly think that you are capable of running this hotel? When I want something bad enough and when I have my mind up to it, I always, I always accomplish. At 32 years of age, tell me one thing that you've accomplished in your life on your own. I worked when I was 14 at a fast food place. Are you serious? You want me to get impressed with that? No, I, no but I'm just saying. Vanda, do you honestly think that you and your big sister are capable of running this hotel? I want to say yes, but I just, my head says no. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like a knife has just been run to my heart, but I can run this place by myself. You have to be honest with yourself. I think we can make it with the positive reinforcement oh that I use. I would shit myself asking you to run my dog up the hill, let alone a hotel. Pipestone, Minnesota's Calumet Inn is in a dreadful state. The food is awful. It is absolutely fucking oh, disgusting. Gross. And the rooms are just as bad. Oh, that's moldy. Oh, man. And the owners are totally useless. I would shit myself asking you to run my dog up the hill, let alone a hotel. There's only one person that can help me save this place. Unless I can convince Mandy to come back, and take on the role as a general manager, then, quite frankly, Rena and Vanda are screwed. And I will tell them to close the hotel tonight. Hi, darling. You have you got two minutes? You had every right to walk out. Mm -hmm. How are you feeling? Bitter, but I'm okay. Yeah. <laughs> Life's too short. It. Yeah. Watching the way you work and the way you feel for the place and how much energy you put in to that hotel, uh, you are a bloody good general manager. Thank you. You know your job. Thank you. If you were given the absolute control of that place to run it, would you come back? Mm. That's tough. I just, I don't like them. I know. And after everything that's been said, I don't, I mean, I, I don't know. I just. I don't know. If I was Mandy, I don't know what I'd do either. Take care. And please, think about it. I really don't know what's going to happen at this hotel. Are Rena and Vanda capable of change? Do they have it in them to shoulder the responsibility of this hotel? I need to have a proper chat with their mum. Hello. Hi. It smells incredible up here. <laughs> Come on in. What are you cooking? I am cooking green curry. It smells incredible. And who's, uh, whose recipes are these? Oh, I just make up. <laughs> Do you mind? Have I a little taste? Yeah, sure. A little bit spicy, maybe. No, that's perfect. That is absolutely perfect. My God. Mmm. <laughs> wow. That is delicious. That's the tastiest food. Thank you. I have eaten since I've been here. Thank you. <laughs> um, amazing. You're a very, very good cook. How many times a week do you cook for your daughters? 
seven days a week. <laughs> Those babies need to grow up. Yeah, I know that. I, sp I spoil them. <laughs> when was the last time you had a break? Oh, not really. <laughs> not at all. Sometimes I get frustrated. I tell them, you need to do the work by yourself. Rena and Vanda treat their mother as their personal chef. So she's stuck at the hotel working seven days a week. It's time the girls grew up. I wanted to talk to all four of you to shed some light. If you want to teach your daughters responsibility, like I have to as a father with three daughters, I buy them a fucking goldfish, not a hotel. Jim, do you want to be here? I wouldn't want to stay here on a permanent basis. Rita? No. No. And do you want to be here? Mm, no, I don't. Rita? I'm not happy here. I'm not, I'll be honest. That's not what I'm asking, darling. I'm asking you, do you want to be here? I don't think you do either. You need to go back to Minneapolis. You need to get into the city. Thank That's you. That's what you need to do. Thank you. That's what I want. <laughs> oh. I want us so bad. <laughs> Thank you. I'm sorry. There's just something I've been afraid to say. <laughs> Each one of you are actually trapped inside this hotel. What do we do? I would like you to decide as a family. Do you want a proper general manager to run the hotel for you? Or do you want to sell it or shut it down? The decision is yours. Coming up, the family has come to a decision about whether to close the doors of this historic Calumet Inn. I'm very sorry. The owners of Pipestone, Minnesota's historic Calumet Inn have made a decision about whether to shut the hotel down, sell it, or get a proper general manager to run it for them. I have no idea what's going to happen. I'm nervous. I'm very sorry for the way that you guys have been treated. And we have made a, a decision here that will turn this place around. And um, that means us stepping out of the picture. Tomorrow. There is going to be a new general manager here. Somebody actually in charge, someone with the authority from the owners to run this place on their behalf. Stay there. Let me get them for you, please. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to the Calumet's new general manager. Good to see you. Say hello to your team. After talking with Gordon, I realized everybody that works there is like my second family. I care too much about the Calumet to allow the doors to be closed. I'm pleased you're back. You are an asset to this hotel. These two young girls are leaving this hotel. This is exactly what I've wanted all along. I've always wanted a true general manager to run the place, and I would come here on the weekends to help out with the decorations. They know that it's not healthy. They know they can't continue. Oh, I'm beyond ready to give Mandy, you know, full reins and full control as general manager. I have full faith in her. She's a very powerful, very competent, very strong lady. Tomorrow, we are relaunching this hotel under new management. And there are going to be a lot of changes. I want all of you to get out of here and get some rest, because tomorrow is one hell of a day. Yeah. Thank you. Today, everyone wins. As the family is free to leave Pipestone, the staff get a proper leader, and Mandy gets the freedom to be in charge. And overnight, the interior of this historic building has got what it has long deserved to, a wonderful transformation. Good morning. Hi. Welcome to the new Calumet Inn. This is incredibly historic and a very special hotel. But now it's somewhere where guests are going to be incredibly well looked after. Come with me. Let's go. I take it you like it. I love it. Gone is that disgusting wallpaper. Now we have a stunning, bright, colorful 
paint of Kelly Green. New mattress, new box frame, new linen, uh, new cushions, and a bed to absolutely disappear in. Notice how bright it is? Let's try and keep the bulbs in the fixtures, Jim, especially in that rear entrance tunnel. <laughs> Gone is that dreadful rail in the corner. We replaced that with a wonderful, tall wardrobe. How nice is that? Oh, yeah. Beforehand, the jacuzzi looks awkward. Now we frame the bathtub with these beautiful custom drapes. So you can highlight the fact that it's a stunning jacuzzi, but we've given it its own space. I'm blown away. I mean, you know, guests are actually going to be happy to spend their honeymoons here, and we're going to be proud to actually show this room. This one is really special. I mean, yeah, it's a, a new addition. Please, welcome to my favorite room. Jump oh. in there. Let's go. <gasps> Gone is the bedroom. You now have a fabulous, unique fitness centre yes. where guests, like myself, do not have to walk 100 metres. This room is actually what everybody needs in here. When people are stressed out, when they want to kill each other, they can just go in there and just relax. Come and take a seat, please. I've got something that is really going to put this hotel on the map. The food before lacked the heart you would get from home cooking. Turns out, the answer was right under our noses. Rita? We've adapted your cooking style. Rita's Thai specials. Wow. <laughs> Rita, when I tasted your food upstairs, my darling, I was blown away. Oh, yeah. Now, the legacy is going to continue. A stunning beef satay, and then a delicious green chicken curry, and a phenomenal pad thai. Thank you, ladies. Come on, dig in, dig in, dig in, dig in. Oh, this is real pot pie. Mm -hmm. Rita, what do you think, my darling? Excellent. Yeah? Yep. I am very excited to see my Thai food on the menu. It tastes very good, yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, are we ready? Ready? Okay, all good? I'm ready. ready to go? Yeah, brilliant. With a rejuvenated energy, the staff are ready for the first night of the Calumet's new life. Wow. Welcome to the Calumet Inn. My name's Mandy, general manager. How are we doing tonight? Doing very Good. Well. All right, we have a new menu. Satay, please. First ticket, Jen. Good luck. Thank you. You can do this. Oh, this is a whole new level of Thai food. It's fresh. I'm really excited about that. It's something I've always wanted to do. And for the first time, parents Jim and Rita are enjoying their investment instead of having to work at it. Much better, huh, Jim? Thousand percent better. Keep up the good work. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when Mandy agreed to return, it was on the condition that Rena and Vanda would be out of the picture. Unfortunately, these we sisters good, can't stop interfering. Are we good? Excellent. And were you still working on that, or would you like me to take... Okay, all right, enjoy. <laughs> Ooh, how are you doing tonight? Do you have a wine list? I can go grab you one. Oh my gosh, I had, oh, they remade our wine list. I had no idea. The hotel can't afford to lose Mandy again. With so much at stake, I've got to step in. You know? what, what are you doing? I am meeting and greeting the guests. <laughs> what are you doing? Hi, I'm helping out. Helping out? Let me just tell you something. You swanning around looking like you're here to take the cream because you want to meet and greet the guests. You've actually done fuck all tonight. No, what am I supposed to do? Get back upstairs and pack. Now. The Calumet's relaunch is going well, and the team are handling more guests than the hotel has seen in years. Two ribeyes and a spirit. I got it. The guests are loving the new rooms upstairs. Definitely like the color. The green really makes it bright. It's a nice mix of old and new. Yeah. Hey, yep, come back here. And I'm really pleased to see Mandy stepping up and taking control of a team as the general manager. You have to communicate with the kitchen a little bit better. There's just one last detail to address. Rena and Vanda need to hit the road. Vanda, are you finished packing yet? The taxi's on its way. I'm going. OK, ladies. Taxi's here. Uh, listen, safe travels. Uh, good luck. OK? Thank you. A little present for you. To teach you responsibility back in Minneapolis. <laughs> Please. Oh, dear Lord. Oh, thank, you. thank you. Now, look after them. Once you've got the hangar looking after those, then we can step up to a cat. OK. Once the cat's fine, then we can go up to a dog. Okay. Look after those fish. Good night. I'm going to go off and pursue my dreams. Um, I'm going to travel and continue onwards into my 30s. A happy person, not miserable. We have a 
goldfish. Don't drop it. <laughs> Will not drop the goldfish. <laughs> I'm going back to Minneapolis, but I'm really excited to feel free to let out my creativity and show the world what I'm capable of. Look, one is bigger, one is smaller. The bigger one can be Rena, the little one can be Panda. <laughs> what a week. When I first arrived, there were two spoiled brats that were playing at running a hotel. The change has been extraordinary. The key to the turnaround was in Mandy coming back and standing strong as a proper general manager. This time it's a proper goodbye. And I cannot wait to come back and see you. Awesome. I believe in you. You already have made a big difference. Good luck with it. Thanks. Thank you. Well done. Thank you so much. Good night, darling. I feel like a whole new person. I am ready to just go full bore with this. Thank you so much, Gordon, for giving me my job back and for believing in me. I do hope those goldfish survive. It's 50-50. <laughs>